I think it's pretty safe to say Tailwind CSS is one of the most popular and the best CSS framework out there. This is one of the reasons why it's widely beloved and used by a lot of developers and companies out there. And today I'm going to be showing you 10 awesome Tailwind CSS tips that will make your life easier. And you really want to stay to the end because I'll be sharing a bonus tip at the end of this video. Without any further ado, let's dive right in. Now, before I continue, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is going to really help the channel and going to help me create more awesome tips like this for you. So let's dive right in. The first thing I want to introduce you to is Tailwind Play. So when you go to play.tailwindcss.com, well, Tailwind CSS actually gives you a tool right here to play around and use it to learn or do amazing things with Tailwind CSS. So it's essentially a code editor for Tailwind CSS you can make use of without any setup. So let's say you want to build a UI quickly or want to play around with some things in Tailwind CSS, well, you can just spin this up. I've used it a lot of times. You don't have to start setting up a project in maybe VS Code with HTML or React like I see a lot of people do. You can just make use of Tailwind Play. And the best and amazing part is you can just use Tailwind CSS classes right out of the box. We have a preview here and we can see that, oh, you can also get the responsive styles or the responsive screen sizes you actually need. You can also toggle this, arrange the layout right here. We can see it's also easy to actually play around with. Okay, so you can toggle it light or dark mode. And one amazing feature is that it comes with Tailwind IntelliSense. So right here, I can just change this to maybe instead of this, I can say BG Gray. Um, right there okay so 900 so we can see it right there it's going to automatically apply the changes and the best part i think about stem with play is the fact that you can actually share it's going to generate a unique url for you so you can share this with anyone and they can quickly preview the styles you've actually made and throughout the rest of this video i'm going to be making use of tailwind play all right and another thing i want to show you is hero icons hero icons was actually created a group of icons created by the makers of tailwind css okay so you can essentially come and copy different icons right I've made a video concerning this before and I'm going to put the link to that in the description below so we can copy the SVG for this so I can just clear all of this put the SVG and the best part is this actually makes use of 10 with CSS classes so we can say okay right here size is 6 so I can change the size to 20 and we can see it right here okay I can add class let's say text um okay so let's say text green 500 we can see it right there which is very 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 awesome if let's say you're working with jsx in frameworks like react preact solid or maybe quick js where you can copy the jsx right here now let's move on to the second one let's say you are building a ui and you want to have a kind of container or a fixed width of some kind let's say i paste this in here and i want it to be okay let's say the width is going to be let's give it an arbitrary value and i'm going to say uh, 1000 pixels and Okay, we can see it right here, but this is always going to be 1000 pixels. All right, which might not be what we want, but then we say this actually gives us a particular class, which is the container class. So I can just add container right here. And we can see this width being applied. If we should over on this particular container class, we can see, okay, it's very responsive and it has different fixed size. So I can just come right here. We can see and on different screen sizes, it's going to adapt itself, which is really nice. Okay, let's say for example, this, Flexbox is not justified to the center and it's always going to be at the left hand side which is nice but let's say you want to configure your container to always be centralized you can just come here to the config right here and you can say something like container and right here we can add center and true and this way you don't actually need any additional class like um, MX Auto or aligning the flex item to the center is always going to be centralized. Another thing is we've all been there where we had to add uh, width and height to a particular container or HTML element. So we have right here width 20, height 20. Now, whenever your width and height is always going to be the same, that is you want to have a square, instead of doing this, you can just use one single class, which is going to be size. So right here, this is going to give it width 20 and height 20. I can see here the width and height is going to be the same. So so if I want to actually make it smaller, I can reduce it and we can see right here. So using the size class is actually a great way to replace writing out the width and the height. All right, for the next one, let's quickly take a look at this right here. We have a grid, okay, which on mobile is going to have one column, but on desktop is going to come here and have three columns. All right, and we can over on each one of these, but let's say we want to add a border in between. Well, uh, there are two ways you might have thought of, okay, let me add a border, let's say, border right 
okay um yeah and then come also here and add a border right well that is the long way of going around it so let me remove this and instead we can have something which is the divide property so i'm going to say divide divide x and we can see it's added borders in between okay that's basically the magic of divide what about if we actually want to add vertically so all we just have to do is add a divide y right here and we can see that this right here adds it vertically and this year horizontally and also you can adjust the color so for example i can say divide green let's say 600 so next let's look at adding spaces in between elements so by default this year we have a grid container here which actually has three columns and we can see we all know that we can add a gap property so we have a gap property of five you can also specify for x and y axis by default this is going to add the same amount of gap for both the x and y axis so i can decide that okay for the x i want it to be let's say 10 and then for the y i want it to be five okay so we can see that the spaces between these guys right here is different from the spaces between these guys right here but let's say you are not inside of a grid container or inside of a flex box this gap property is not going to work so if i should remove this automatically this is not going to work but let's say you still want to add your spacing well what you can do is you can basically use your space property so this essentially adds margin and it basically works just like gap in the sense that you can also specify for the x-axis and for the y-axis so for this i'm just going to specify space y5 and we can see right there it's also added the spacing we actually needed without making use of gap and because we are not in grid or flex box okay another thing we can do is we can actually group elements together inside of tailwind css so let's say we have this card for example we can see that when we over on this subscribe button it actually moves up a bit but we want that whenever we over on the card as a whole we want some changes to be applied to the child elements well i can just actually add a group right here and the next thing is let's say for example this particular icon here i want it to or this avatar i want it to actually maybe rotate and shrink itself a bit where i can just come right here and add the group over the scale is going to be reduced to 90 and on the group over they rotate 360 degree and if we should come here we can see when we over on the card itself it's actually going to apply that and also let's say for example we want to actually add a bit of effect whenever we over on the card to this text here so i can just add the group over the scale is going to be reduced to 90 but it's going to move to the left a bit so if we should come here and over we can see it's right here next let's say you're actually building a component or a button which when the user is performing an action there's going to be a loading spinner or something what well, then with css actually give you some basic nice looking animation so right here for example on this particular icon i can come here and i can add something like animate we can see we have animate none we can see the spin we can see the pink we can see pulse okay and we can see the bounce so in this case the spin is going to be a great one and you don't have to write any custom css to have this nice looking animation right here which is nice if you ask me all right let's look at adding gradients inside of the CSS. well adding gradient is very simple well i'm just going to remove this first and we're going to add bg gradients to r now this depends on the direction you actually want it to go to so bg gradient to t the notes to the top r to the right uh t r to the top right and you get the gist so we want bg gradient to r where we can start from okay what color do we want to start from so let's say we want to start from black we can see this right here but i actually want to create a beautiful gradient so i'm going to bring this tab right here so uh we're going to pick a particular gradient any gradient that looks nice and for this i actually want to use um either this gradient or this okay let's make use of this so we're going to pick the first color in this particular gradient so i'm just going to come here instead of from black i'm going to use an arbitrary volume okay and then you can specify the two colors so the two let's say to black okay uh but that's not the color we're actually going with so let's come back here and the third color is actually this right here and let's change this to arbitrary values also and we can see this is a nice two step gradient but let's say we want to also add another color in between i can come right here back right here and okay we have this color in between so let's copy that and i can just say via this and we can see this is looking real nice you can also customize the stop point so for example i can say something like from okay that's going to be 10 percent so and then we can say via is going to be 70 percent okay we can see 
the VR actually moved right here and we can say okay for example the two is going to be 90 percent so you can actually customize this as needed so i can do something like maybe 30 percent or 20 aha so you can also customize the stop point for your gradients now let's go into some text-based tips in tailwind css so right here we have this dummy text so let's say for example we actually want to reduce the amount of line it shows so we have this particular class we can make use of we have the line clamp one two three four five as you can see on the right hand side it only shows the number of lines specified so line clamp one is basically going to show just one line line clamp two two line and so on so we can use either of these especially very useful when it comes to showing except especially on a blog okay we can see here but let's say you just need a line and that's it you can instead make use of what is called the truncate so this is essentially from the name you can guess that going to truncate it and make it a single line and we can see right there when if i should reduce this it's automatically going to truncate that that's that's really interesting now let's move on to something more interesting so let's say you're actually building a blog like i mentioned earlier or let's say documentation or something that is very text-based and it's going to be very difficult or it's very difficult to actually start writing styles for each of these elements for h2 your p tag your anchor tag and so on what the css actually helps with that with their typographic plugin so if i should come right here let's bring this here we can see we have this typographic plugin and they have other plugins also for forms aspect ratio container queries and so on but the one we are going to be focusing on is this typography plugin here is the github repo for that and we can see it contains all of the details you actually need to know but let's actually have that right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to come to my tail css config right here on that plugins i can just paste this in so we can see we have the tail with css slash typography now the next step or the only other thing you need to do is just come right here and inside of the container or inside of the parent element just add a class of pros and we're going to see yeah this is awesome i mean this is just so awesome so we say it says actually has styles which is going to style everything up including when it comes to code blocks and this is really looking nice with just one class we're able to get this though there are additional styles like pros lg in case you actually want it bigger but i think i prefer what we have and if you come right here to the documentation you can see that okay we can actually add some additional modifiers such as pro slate pro zinc pro neutral and so on but i'm not really concerned about that i think what i'm concerned and i actually want to show you is the elements modifier so you can actually customize each of the elements that the css has created or has styled for you so for example right here let's say i want my headings to actually have maybe a blue color so i can just come right here and say pros headings and i want it to be text green um let's say for example text green 500 so this is an example of the modifiers the element modifiers that we have so you can actually target and customize every one of these pre-styled elements which is so much nice and so much amazing and now for the bonus tip so i know you might not have time every time to start writing then with css code and start inputting all of the styles I mean you are busy i understand i'm busy also and that is where then we say says components libraries actually come into place and the one i'm going to recommend which i feel like it's actually the best one out there is going to be hyper ui so let's bring this here and we can see hyper ui actually has tons and lots and lots of components i already talked about it in detail in this video right here so let's say i'm building a blog for example i can just come right here into the blog card components i just want to copy the html for this and let's come here and let's just paste this here now we can see this card already styled and which is very much interesting in case you are not seeing this very well let's just add an element here so and i can just add let's add a max width of okay so we can see it right here this actually looks nice and you can just copy and paste it inside of your project or play around with it and customize as needed now i already mentioned this in one of my previous videos but i believe that it deserves its own mention in this particular video so what do you guys think about these tips are there any other ones that i've left out let me know in the comment section and would you like me to make another video telling you more tips and hacks when it comes to them with css i would really like to know your thoughts and don't forget to like share and subscribe and i'm going to see you in the next one